Uh-oh, I think Gibson's gonna get some hate for doing this, but they're reissuing the Adam Jones Les Paul Custom. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. All right, so last year, the Silver Burst market went in a complete frenzy due to the release of the Adam Jones signatures. You can check out my video right here where I documented both the aged and signed and the VOS versus a vintage original. But the VOS was essentially new old stock condition. It still had the aged finish, but it didn't have the wear and tear of Tool's guitarist Adam Jones, like the aged and signed one did, and it had a signature on the back of the headstock. But for 2021 this year, Gibson is re releasing it again, but it's slightly different. So let's go ahead and take a look at this before I give my thoughts and opinions. So, okay, it kind of looks like the VOS again, except for they've just lightly aged it. So this is kind of bridging the gap in between those two. We still have the posi lock strap buttons on here. They didn't change that, nor did they change the way those things are supposed to be installed. You've got the chrome switch tip right here, the uncovered Seymour Duncan pickup in the bridge, thumb bleeders on the speed knob, same age silver burst finish. All right. Yeah, this is looking like a one for one replica, except for they've just lightly aged it instead of heavily aged it. So we no longer have any like buckle rash back here necessarily. But I think the biggest thing is the neck. So this is what the aged and signed version looked like. It had all that neck wear on the back. A few select examples might even expose a cool three-piece flamed maple neck. But then we move on to the back side of the headstock. Oh, look at this. They've changed it up a little bit. We no longer have his special design on the back, but we do have like a... It almost looks like a double hashtag, so that's something that makes it different. And the signature is much lower on this. So it's still aged in sign, so it's a little bit better than the old VOS run. It's just not as heavily aged as the last full-on age signed. But then you'll also notice our serial number. They changed that up. So now it says 1979, honoring, you know, the 1979 year of the one he uses. V2, likely for version 2, and the number produced. So this one just happened to show up on Reverb, and it's number 75. And coming down here, according to this listing, there's only 79 of these going to be made. So it's like the original age signed. I've been messaging around to other dealers, and it seems they're getting about the same allotment as last time. Like one dealer said they're only getting two. So it doesn't seem like this is going to be a forever production model. But this one was listed at $10,000. So that's the exact same price of the original age signed from last year, at least at stores. I've been told that the release date is November 2nd for this by dealers. So if you want one of these, contact your dealer now. It's probably too late. And if it's anything like the first run, I can see these things reselling for more. But it's hard to judge anymore. The guitar market has started to quiet down just a little bit when it comes to that. But Adam Jones is like the first model that started all this craze. So now it's opinion time. As a guy who loves these original Adam Jones runs and still owns one of them yet today, do I think this is going to affect the price? Should people be upset? No, not for the original age sign. Like, let, let's check this out real quick. They only made 79 of these things. It's got the more aggressive aging, more closely resembles his. The original aged one does not actually have the Seymour Duncan lettering on it, just like the old difference between the VOS and the H signed. So that's a big difference right there. Some guys might not like that this has the wear on the top, but that's just how his is. Looking at this listing, it appears that they're going to give you the mirror for the headstock if you want to put it on, similar to what they did with the VOS run. It did not come installed from the factory right there. All right, what else is different besides all the wear and tear? This one was hand numbered by him. I just happened to own 1979, which I think is the coolest number. And hey, look what else is different. This one is stamped made in USA, just like his original one. And it has his actual serial number. It's not changed at all. Like the VOSs, they changed the last three digits in order to go up and tell you which number it is out of it. All of the aged and signed original runs had his actual number. And they differentiated it by his signature and then what number he put on it. And I think sometimes people put words in Gibson's mouth. I don't think they ever said, this is the only run, we're never going to do anything else. I think sometimes collectors just think that's what they're going to do. Because they even have apparel for Adam Jones now, the whole 1979 moniker. They've got those mini guitars for 120 bucks that people are buying, but that one is signed. 
They've also got the cheaper one down here for 60 if you like the look of those things. They have a new limited edition poster. They've got t-shirts on here. That's a new one. I kind of like this design as far as these things go. I've always wanted to sell similar shirts of like every guitar I review do a limited edition of 50 t-shirts just with like the guitar body on it or something. Then there's also signed posters for a hundred bucks more as long as supplies last and hey, just in case you've missed those other videos, you can buy the case separately if they're ever in stock for only 300 bucks, which is a nice deal for a USA made TKL case that's customized. Since they've limited the production of this down to just another 79 and everything is so different, I think this is just going to be added to the Adam Jones collector's lists. I mean, there is enough different on this to own one of every single one. Now, could you choose between the VOS and this one? Yeah, I think you could. But the VOS are nice guitars if you want a kind of a clean one. So I will say thank you Gibson for at least changing it up a little bit. This new run is very cool. I can see it being very desirable for somebody who wanted something in between VOS and that heavy age sign, but still wanted Adam's signature on it. And maybe some guys don't want the made in USA stamp on it. Most custom shop level guitars don't have that. And we have the regular ink stamp serial number style. Wait, wait a minute. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Where's the volute? Where's the volute? Oh my goodness. Got the same case, but where's the volute? Okay, I think I see it. It's just reflecting the light down there. I was gonna say, did they take the volute out? That would actually make me really happy because that would, you know, definitely secure the value of the original run. But I guess those ones were pretty far down anyways. Okay, mini heart attack over. It is still there. His signature just goes to the very butt of it. All right, so I guess I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions of this new Adam Jones run. I'll probably end up getting one of these just to review it for fun. If I still have my other age sign, we can compare it then. I don't currently own a VOS. But if you own one of the original runs, I really don't think you have to worry about the value decreasing because... I just see this all happening again, especially since people know the history of these. It might even get uglier this time and you might see prices start to shoot up again. I hope not. I hope people can, you know, actually get these that want these. I mean, that's why they're making it and they've clearly made it obvious that they're going to keep producing these. I mean, maybe next year we'll see something different. Maybe we'll see moderately aged, but not signed. I mean, from a business standpoint, they can sell regular Les Paul Customs that look like this without all the fancy parts for 5000 Why would they not sell them for ten grand? <laughs> so only time will tell on these. I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, maybe search these out at a dealer if you missed out on the first run because, you know, it's still open chance to get one for the original retail price. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but there are a few more guitars we can talk about today. Or if you're not interested in silver burst guitars and you skipped all the way to this part of the video, hey, welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. They just released a Chuck Berry ES355 in a wine red. Seeing as they just did a Chuck Berry bottle, I think, what was it, two years ago, and it took them a little bit of time to get through all of them, I was surprised to see another Chuck Berry come through here. I mean, yeah, he's an iconic guitarist, but at this point, it almost seems like they're kind of milking it. But this is an absolutely stunning guitar, so I'm not going to question it too much. So just like last time, these things are priced about the same price as what a vintage original would be. The 350Ts were actually priced more so then and caused the market to kind of correct in that aspect. I'm not sure if people were paying it, but that's what asking prices ended up being. But if I remember correctly, they made like 55 of those and this time double production at 100 guitars. So they're definitely planning to sell a little bit more of these, but at the same time, they're also $3,000 cheaper and a completely different style of instrument. It's got that Maestro Lyre Vibrola on it with that really cool aged Gibson headstock. Oh wow, they even chipped some of the lacquer off the headstock there. I just thought that was reflecting light differently, but no, that, that's all wear and tear, all right. Because that's the other thing that's different from these. It's not in the title, but these are aged. Oh wow, these things are starting to dwindle. There were quite a few of them on Reaver, but the original retail price of $7,000 is now up to $7,999 by this brand new dealer. I think they've messed up something there. I don't think they can do that. <laughs> I guess maybe it's just minimum advertised price. They, they, they don't have to sell it for that. But I've definitely heard of dealers getting in trouble for doing that. It's, it's the used market where it doesn't matter. You can sell it for whatever the market's willing to pay. I don't see these things going too crazy though. There's a hundred of them. Sure, they're nice, 
but you could get a vintage original for about the same price. But of course now, people are going to start asking more for the originals. Like, I didn't even realize they made 355s that looked this beautiful back in the 70s. Like, I knew they did, but I didn't realize they had the Vibrola. So if you look through this, his was a 1978. So we type that in, nothing right now. But here's a 72 for about 8,000. That's 60s, so it's going to be more expensive. Here's a 75 for about 8,000. And I'm not sure if these guys actually get that much. That seems awfully high for one of these. But looking at this, it looks pretty close to what Gibson did recreate. I think they did a good job on these so far. I mean, the headstock's not exact. But of course they have to put the modernized one. At least they tried to use their older, early 70s style logo on it. That'd really make me lose my mind if they, they started using an exact le replica of the 70s logo. That'd be cool. Uh, let's pop over here to the reverb price guide. So this shows me prices between, you know, two and a half. Ad, that's way too low. There had to be like headstock repair and like all replaced parts. But I could easily see like that. $4,000 to $6,000 range. A lot of these are just asking prices, but that is a fine example right here too, from 1974. These are just cool guitars. I'm glad Gibson pointed them out to the whole world. They might deserve some more love. So I'm pretty sure we'll see one of these on the show. It, it might take me a while to get one, but I do have one on order. And to wrap things up today, another signature release, a BB King Lucille in the Epiphone lineup. So unfortunately, BB King is no longer with us, but he is well known for calling his guitars Lucille. And he actually has a signature Lucille model that's been in production since the 80s, off and on, and had a bunch of limited edition releases in many a different colors. These have been in production for quite some time anyways. There's been an Epiphone from 97 to 2019, according to Reverb here. I thought that was strange how there were so many reviews. So there must have just been a slight lull in production. So we can just get these new again. But this time we have it within the Epiphone lineup and it still says Lucille on the headstock. Now I've never actually owned a Lucille before so I might not have all the specs right but I don't want to do the research and fill you guys in because I'm sure one day I will review one. It is a highly iconic guitar. But I'm guessing it, it's kind of like a 335 except for they've taken the F holes out. And it kind of has some Tom DeLong ES333 like elements to it because we actually have a back access control plate. So if you're a tinkerer and a modder and love the 335 shape, I would suggest one of these because it's a lot easier to work with a back plate than it is to work through an F hole. <laughs> but it's got gold hardware black finish with the binding, the fancy headstock as we were talking about earlier. They even went as far, ooh, as reissuing the TP6 tailpiece. I'll be curious, is that a cheap import version or are they using an actual Gibson one? The big question is, am I going to review this model? I wasn't planning on it because if I'm going to review one of these, I'd rather buy a vintage one because it's going to be more entertaining for me. It's what I would like. But that TP6 tailpiece sure does have me curious. But they are $949. So this one, I guess I'll leave it. If somebody wants to new guitar day purchase one, all right, we'll check it out. Only because I'm curious about that tailpiece because it doesn't tell us if it's a metric styled one in the spec sheets. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave your opinion down in the comment section below, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.